Um, one of the physicians spoke to you incinerating prion contaminated bio waste. Can you either deny or corroborate those allegations? Uh, we do have a permit condition for prions. If we were to accept them, we would have to notify the state. Um, it is actually one of the preferred methods for destruction of prions. And, um, you know, autoclaving is not an acceptable method of destruction of prions. There are studies that show that prions are really never fully destroyed and, and remain in the environment. And so uh, landfilling is typically another uh, method that is recommended. We're here with Dr. Brian Mensch, founder and president of the Utah Physicians for a Healthy Environment at the Stair Cycle protests out here in North Salt Lake. And um, let's just cut right to the chase. The other night at a town hall, we asked Stair Cycle directly about the incineration of prions into the environment. And what was said there was quite shocking, at least to us. Um, they said that they were allowed to accept prions and that they would have to notify the state to incinerate them. And in the same meeting, emergency bypasses were discussed. And we saw, I think it was back in 05, there was 31 emergency bypasses in one year. Do those two things go hand in hand, Dr. Mensch? What's your thoughts? Well, the, the idea that there's, there's a safe way to, depro to dispose of prions in, in human or animal tissue, and that that safe way is to incinerate it, is absolutely ludicrous for several reasons. One, the temperatures in this incinerator, or any other incinerator, are not hot enough to deactivate those proteins that are highly infective and transmit the disease. Studies in Great Britain have shown that those proteins aren't deactivated by these temperatures. So these prions can be assumed to be live when they are emitted from these smokestacks. Now, once they land uh, on the surfaces in the surrounding community, the soil, cars, anything you can think of, they're still active. So, should we be afraid? This isn't, this isn't disposing in, in any safe way whatsoever uh, this kind of tissue. The only way to dispose of that kind of tissue is to bury it. So, yes, citizens have a right to be concerned about it. The first thing is they have a right to have this threat assessed, and we're not assessing it. Stericycle isn't, our health department isn't, there's no state agency that is assessing whether or not this is really a threat, because all of the reasons that I just mentioned suggest that in fact it is a bona fide health threat, and they're not doing anything about it. Has any known host ever survived a prion disease that they know of? Well. Uh, Kreutzfeldt Jakob disease is, is the term for the human version of mad cow. It's a hundred percent fatal uh, form of encephalopathy. So it deserves to have uh, a real scrutiny as to whether or not, in fact, that's a risk that this community is being subjected to, and no one's done anything to assess that. So that's another, just one of the many reasons why this facility should not be incinerating anything in this community, certainly not human and animal carcasses, human tissue and animal carcasses that are highly suspected of being infected with it. Now, the other night at the meeting, uh, Senator Weiler uh, took a stance where he referred to the Utah Physicians for a Healthy Environment as activists with a quote-unquote agenda. Uh, the term radical was used um, in that forum. How do you respond to that? Well, I'm, I'm proud of our, quote, agenda. If protecting public health is radical, I'm proud to be a radical. And we certainly need some state officials to be more radical. And that's, what we, that's one of the reasons why we're here, is to try and force the state to start protecting this community. Now, we've followed your group closely since its inception. And, you know, we've seen what you've gone through with, with the battles that are going so far with Kennecott and Tesoro. Um, I don't think you guys even pay administrative personnel with your group. Um, why, why do you think he would take a position like that? Why, why Senator Weiler would? Well, um, unfortunately, a, a lot of the uh, political figures in this state have a real heavy bias towards business protection, which is sometimes, if not frequently, in conflict with public health protection. And in their mind, business protection deserves priority. In the minds of our physicians group, in the minds of these citizens, in the minds of thousands of patients that we see and treat every day, it should be just the opposite. 
priority should be given to public health, not to businesses like this that in fact are not providing the service that this community needs. Now in the past as well, in, in some of these other situations with some of the in industrial point sources in the valley, we've heard the stance, okay, you know, we're not going to have this expansion, we're not going to put up with this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But in this situation, the stance has pretty much been uniform. Shut them down. We want them gone. Uh, what's different this time? Uh, is it, does it hit closer to home? Well, the, the community is, is finally starting to realize that this, in fact, represents a serious threat to their health. Uh, that knowledge is out there, and you, as you can see here, there's a decreased willingness to put up with it any longer. Dr. Brian Mensch, Utah Physicians for a Healthy Environment, thank you. Thank you.